Hello, 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 happy crafters. Oh my goodness, spring is almost here and I have put together 18 different spring crafts using Dollar Tree supplies to make some really fun DIY projects for your spring decorating. Let's get started. It all just goes away and things are planned to say, oh baby. So everything I got for this project is from the Dollar Tree. Some Easter signs, a shovel, I don't even know what these are. They're like lids, some skewers, and some crafting sticks. And the first thing I had to do was remove the embellishments. So the embellishments are coming off of the signs. And I used six signs in total. So I had to basically take everything off of six different signs, including the hangers. I started this project with the bottom. So I took some craft sticks and two of the Easter signs and I secured the two signs together using these larger craft sticks. And I spaced out the craft sticks going up and down first and then I changed to a horizontal pattern that would seal the two edges of each of the signs together. So this is gonna be the bottom of the wagon. And next I have to put the sides on. So I took some hot glue and attached another sign to the side. And this will be one side of the wagon. And it was really wobbly. So I used some hot glue to secure the inside seam where they join up. And then I repeated the process on the other long side of the wagon. And I took another sign and measured off how long it would need to be to be the front or the back of the wagon. See my little mark? That's where I'm going to cut it. And then I repeated the process with the fourth side of the wagon. And I took the signs outside and cut them down to size and then just secured them in place. And again, I used hot glue on all of the seams where the sides of the wagon will meet the bottom as well as the other side. And they have these really cool finger, I don't know what they are, finger protectors at the Dollar Tree. So I use that to smooth down the glue and really push it down into the corners. And this is the last piece that needs to go in place. So I hot glued that on place and repeated the process that I've done for the other three sides. Right, so that is pretty much the base of our wagon. We have the box part of it all done. So then I flipped it over and again, using the hot glue, filled in any open or empty spaces with glue just to make sure it was going to be secured. And then I took some one by two lumber 
And this is going to be like on the underside where the wheels go. I have no idea what it's called, but I secured two pieces of the one by two and then I attached it to the bottom of the wagon. And I did one for the front as well as the back of the wagon. Now this is where the wheels are gonna go. And using the Dollar Tree skewers, I just secured a bunch of them together using some tape. and repeated the process for the second set of wheels. And then I'm going to secure these in place on those one by twos. So for this, I used a lot of glue so that I can kind of roll those skewers around and really make sure they're secure onto the block of wood. and repeated the process with the second set. Now for my wheels, I had these little canvases that I got from a Michael's grab bag and I figured this would be a good size wheel. This was the closest that I could find. So I secured each one onto the skewers. And there are the wheels for my wagon. And I wanted it to have a finished edge, so I took some more of the craft sticks and these were the perfect size to put on the corners. So I used a craft stick on every corner. And then it was time to paint, so I took it outside and spray painted it with Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Spray Paint. If you wanted to, you could paint this, but I wanted to get it done faster, so I used spray paint. And if you are gonna be spray painting, it will take a couple of layers of spray paint. So do one layer and then let it dry and then do another layer. And if you're not happy with it, you could do a third layer. All right, the last component of our wagon is the handle. So I took that Dollar Tree shovel, cut the end off, and now I'm spray painting it with a little bit of silver spray paint. and from a shovel to a wagon handle. And I wanted this to look like farmhouse style. So using a permanent marker and a ruler, I just drew on some lines to make it look like, I don't even know what that style is called, but I wanted to see the lines. So like it was three pieces of wood put together. And I'm not gonna show you the whole process, but I did this on all four sides of the wagon. That looks farmhousey, doesn't it? And then I found these decorative lids, and this is what I really wanted the wheels to be, but they weren't quite large enough, and that was why I added the larger wheel in the background. So then I just used some glue and secured these decorative lids onto the wheels. And it's very hard to see, and I apologize for that, but to secure my handle to the front of my wagon, 
I just used hot glue and a lot of it. And then I let the hot glue dry, but it wasn't the same color. It wasn't silver like the handle of my wagon. So I used some silver paint and just painted the hot glue to make it look like I meant to do that. And once my wagon was done, then it was time to decorate. And because it is Easter, I decided to fill my wagon with all kinds of fun Easter decorations. And I started with the flowers. And I have a lot of flowers, so I just grabbed from my stash and just kind of put flowers in just to play around and see what it looked like. I didn't secure the flowers in with anything because I do want to use this wagon for other decorating, but I did use some pool noodles to help me keep those flowers in place and add some different layers to my decorating. Add in a Dollar Tree Easter Bunny and a few eggs and my wagon is just about done. And here is my adorable Dollar Tree farmhouse wagon. I did not think I would be able to make this, but I am really happy with how it turned out. It's so cute, especially being filled with lots of different decorations. And it looks really nice on my porch. Lots of Easter eggs and a wire wreath as well as a glue gun and a lot of glue sticks. All right, so now we're gonna make this Easter egg wreath. So when I'm making the wreath itself with the eggs, it really doesn't matter what kind of eggs they are. I have these plastic eggs, as well as some leftover eggs that I had when I made my topiary tree, my Easter egg topiary tree. So I've got these eggs too. So these are smaller ones, so we'll probably use these to fill in for the wreath itself. So I think I'm gonna start with just these eggs. But I do want those larger ones. I think there were six of them. Start with these guys first for our wreath. Go ahead and get rid of that tag. We don't need it. Now I think I'm just going to glue some of these eggs onto the wreath form. So at Christmas time, I actually made one of these wreaths as well, and I made it using different ornaments. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing, and I'm just gonna attach some eggs to this form. And doing this project on a silicone mat is gonna be really important because you're gonna have lots of little glue spots on the mat itself. So I would highly encourage you to get a silicone mat so then this will be just kind of another layer around the outside edge of the wreath. And the color doesn't really matter. If you wanted to, you could leave these eggs the colors that they are. I'm actually going to paint mine. And then I might go back and add some different accent colors, you know, to make it look kind of like spring. But for now, these guys are A-OK -okay for me, just, just like they are. So here is my Easter egg wreath so far. I think we can add, I don't know. I don't know if we should add any more. And I think now it's time to start adding in some of the other eggs. So these craft eggs, I actually got in a Michael's crab bag last year. And I got so many of these eggs. So 
I'm finally going to put them to good use and use them for my Easter egg wreath. And the plastic Easter eggs actually give a good base and fill this up nicely to begin with. And now I'll start doing the more fancy eggs. This would be actually kind of cool looking like this all over with the, the white eggs is what I'm thinking. So when I'm done with applying all of the eggs, then I'm going to take it outside and paint it. And then we'll come back in, I think, and speckle it. Because I think that'll be really, really pretty. So I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to continue putting the eggs and securing them to the wreath form. All right, so our egg wreath is pretty much done, but I'm gonna actually add these little guys around the edges to give it a little bit of something extra. And I had these, so I figured why not? Okay, so my Easter egg wreath is all dry with the hot glue and I'm just going to go around and see if I can make sure there's no little like cobwebs of glue. All right, that looks okay. So now I'm just going to take some spray paint and this is satin spray paint. It's from I think True Value. I really like the satin finish and this is in white. So now I'm just going to spray paint the entire wreath. is going to take multiple coats of spray paint to get it to be all white but even with like this kind of muted color it looks kind of pretty so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and then I will come back and we will give it one more coat of paint so that we can make sure it's all pretty much uniform and even in color Easter eggs are all dry and yes they have different colors on them. I did a white and then I kind of did just like an overspray of a more of an ivory color because I didn't want them to be just white. So you can do your Easter eggs whatever color you want them to be. I did like my example shows white and off-white or a white and an ivory and now this is the fun part. So now I am going to speckle these eggs. So I'm going to start with some burnt umber and this is very messy. So I am going to put a glove on and sometimes you can get away with not using like water to water this down. Let's see what happens. Yeah, no, we got to water it down. So I'm just going to add some water. And then I'm just going to run my finger over the paintbrush. And this will add some speckles. So this is going to make the eggs look just a little bit more springy, I guess, and not like plastic eggs. But again, when you're doing this, you really want to make sure that you don't have like a lot of stuff out on your table because it can be very messy. All right, I think that's enough for the brown speckles. Maybe over here a bit. But yeah, that's good for the brown. But now I'm going to mix it up and I'm actually going to use some gold for some speckles. I think this will really look pretty. So now I got my gold ready to go. Can't remember which gold this one is. I think that's the folk art gold. So now I'm just going to see if I can add some gold speckles.
All right, so I think the speckled part is all done. So now I'm going to let this set and I'm going to let this paint dry. And we've got one more step that we need to do to our beautiful little Easter egg wreath. It is time to fill in all of the little holes and spaces of the wreath. And I'm just using some Spanish moss and I cut some up just to make it easier to shove in between the eggs. And when I wanna make sure it's in there pretty securely, all I have to do is grab a paintbrush and just push down on the moss. It's a really easy way of getting the moss to stay where you want it to stay. And then you don't have to resort to using a glue gun. So by doing this, this is gonna fill in any of the nooks and crannies that the eggs did not cover. And when I run out, I can simply grab some more Spanish moss and just cut it into pieces, which makes it a lot easier to work with. And when I'm using the paintbrush to put the Spanish moss in, I'm actually using the brush part of the paintbrush, not the end. You can use the end, but it's gonna go right through the Spanish moss. So just by using the paintbrush brush part, I can get the moss to go where I want it to go without worrying about it going through to the bottom. Now that I've filled in all of the little spaces, I'm just gonna go around and see if there's any Spanish moss that I wanna trim away. I am pretty happy with how this looks. And I did think about adding in some greenery pieces too. And I was just kind of playing around and seeing, you know, what that would look like. And honestly, I think I actually prefer this just to be just like this. It looks kind of natural and it actually looks better than I thought it would when I decided to try and do this project. So if you want to add some different greenery pieces or even some different flowers, to your wreath if you're doing it, you could totally do that. You could do whatever you wanted. You could leave it the original colors that all of those eggs were. But for me, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. So all that is left for me to do is go hang up my pretty wreath and admire it like it was meant to be admired hanging on a door. <music> styrofoam cone and if you're not sure where to find these you can actually pick them up at the Dollar Tree. You'll need some plastic Easter eggs too. Dollar Tree has lots of different Easter eggs to choose from and I chose the medium sized plastic eggs. You're also going to need a glue gun with some glue sticks and when you're doing the project you'll want to keep your glue gun on the lower temperature setting for gluing because the styrofoam can actually melt. So you don't want to melt the styrofoam, so use a low temperature glue gun. And you're going to need some chalk paint. Try to find colors that you like. I chose these two colors because I like them. And the reason I chose chalk paint for this project is the paint itself gives a really nice velvety matte finish to the eggs. You're also going to need some brown paint and I'm actually going to water down the paint a little bit with some water. You're also going to need some Spanish moss or reindeer moss and I chose shades of green and brown for my project to have a little bit of color. You're also going to need some gloves because this project can get messy so use gloves to protect your manicure. And the final thing you'll need for this project is a vase. You want to have the vase be big enough to hold your tree or if you have a couple of vases, you could actually make two trees 
And you can find lots of different types of vases to work with either at the Dollar Tree or even your local thrift store. So how about I show you how to make an Easter egg topiary tree. Now once you've gathered all of your supplies, the first part of this project is to paint the eggs. So I'm going to use the chalk paint and again I'm using two different colors that I like together. Now before you start painting, make sure you put on a pair of gloves because like I said, this is a messy project. It's fun, but it's messy. So I painted the eggs and I did a bunch of because I'm going to be using them for different projects as well. And once the eggs were dry, I took an old toothbrush and I dabbed it into a little bit of brown paint that I had added a little bit of water to. And then I ran my finger over the toothbrush, which causes a speckling effect all over the eggs. And then I allowed the brown paint to dry on the eggs as well. Now this is where the project really takes off. So once the eggs were completely dry, I took a Dollar Tree styrofoam cone and my glue gun to secure the eggs to the cone. Now the one thing about the Dollar Tree cones is they are flat on the top. So I did glue an egg to the top of the cone first. And then I actually started securing the eggs at the base of the cone and then I worked my way up to the top. And once my cone was covered with eggs, you can see that there are some bare places. So I took small pieces of Spanish moss and I tucked them into the bare places on my tree just using the end of a paintbrush. Next, I found a vase or a vessel to rest my tree on top of. I didn't have to glue it in place. I literally just placed the tree on top of the vase. And that's it, my project is finished. Didn't it turn out adorable? With a little craftiness and the right supplies, you can make your own Easter egg topiary tree too.
Well, hello, my crafty friends. It's me, Lisa, and I have a super fun project for you, or should I say 14 super fun projects for you today. Do you see all of these decorations on my tiered tray? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make all these pieces. So let's get crafting. So to begin with, we need to have a tiered tray. And this is a tiered tray that I made from different things that I found either at a thrift store, which was Goodwill, and the Dollar Tree. And I have a video showing you how you can make this. So for the first craft, we're gonna be making risers. And I'm making these risers from Jenga blocks that I got at the Dollar Tree, of course. And I wanted to show you that you can make different sizes of risers. So for the first riser, it's gonna be a smaller one. So I'm just using four Jenga blocks. And I'm hot gluing all of the pieces together to basically make a square. And there it is. And I found this box of beads on Amazon and I will leave links to all of these things in the description box below. But I'm going to be using some of these beads for the feet of the riser. So I was just playing around and seeing which beads I wanted to use and I decided on the larger ones. And I just hot glued those beads on the bottom corners of the riser. And I have a cute little riser for my tiered tray. And I wanted to show you how you can make a larger one too. So I'm just playing around with some Jenga blocks and trying to figure out how big this riser needs to be. So this ended up using 10 Jenga blocks. So I hot glued five pieces together to make each side. And then I secured those two pieces of five blocks together. And then using a craft stick that I got this package at the dollar store, I reinforced the bottom in between those two sections. I don't think it would fall apart, but this will make it a little bit stronger just in case. And again, I used beads for the feet. So I applied beads to the corner, but I want this to be a little bit taller. So then I took smaller beads and I attached a smaller bead to each of the larger beads. So this riser will be just a little bit taller than the first one we made. And I think it really gives a little bit of farmhouse feel to this riser. And look, it's like a table and chairs. I painted each of the risers using chalk paint because that's what I had. And you could use these risers in many different ways, but I thought they would be really helpful to elevate some of the projects on the tiered tray that we're going to be doing today.
Now, once I painted the larger riser, I really wanted the edge to look finished. So I took some craft sticks and I just secured those to each side of the riser and it gives it a much more finished appearance. And I did sand it down a little bit. If you wanted to, you could get really fancy and do a lot of sanding, but I opted for just sanding down the pieces a little bit. The risers aren't really gonna be showing very much, so I didn't get crazy with my sanding. But if you want to, feel free. I think that looks much better. And then I just painted everything one more time because you can see where I had sanded down the pieces of the Jenga blocks and also just to tie in everything together and make sure there was no like open spaces because I really don't like seeing that on my projects. And here are my risers all done and ready to be used. All right, this is an easy one. This is a watering can that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale for 50% off. So I paid $2 for it. And I just took some baby's breath artificial flowers and plopped them right down into the watering can. Pretty easy project, but it looks really cute on a tiered tray. And for the next project, we are gonna be making flower balls. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? So I got this package of styrofoam balls on Amazon, and then I'm just taking some silk flowers that I had, and I'm going to be gluing them to the different size of the styrofoam balls. It's an easy, easy project, but it's really cute. And I did remove the bottom portion of each of the flowers before I attached them to the styrofoam ball because it made it a lot easier for the flower heads to stay in place while the glue was drying. And I decided to use some of these blue flowers for the second flower ball that I'm gonna be making.
And I thought it would be really pretty to have a little bit of greenery on this one. So I cut some different leaves from a different flower. I can't, I think that was from the roses. And I just hot glued them onto the bottom. And I find that using smaller flowers works really well for these tiny little flower balls. And as you can see, they're kind of flat, so they do stand on their own pretty well. I didn't go completely around the styrofoam, but left the bottom open so that the ball can sit up all by itself and it doesn't need any extra help. We are going to be making some farmhouse garland in yellow and white because I thought that would look really pretty on this tiered tray. And I found the easiest way to paint a bunch of different wooden beads at one time is to use skewers that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And then you just keep some space between each of the little beads and it's easier to paint. But sometimes the bead hole just kind of lets it move up and down on the skewer. And I really want to make sure to be able to paint all of it. So I'm using some frog tape, which works really well for spray painting. It's, it's like masking tape, but better. And it comes off really easy, which you'll be able to see in just a little bit. But this frog tape is wonderful. It's easy to tear and it keeps the beads separate. So I can make sure to get a nice coat of paint on all of the beads and it might be a little bit more time consuming to do it like this but i think the end product is really worth it and it makes it a lot easier to paint So here are all of my beads ready to be painted on their skewers. And I'm going to use this styrofoam to put the skewers into while I'm painting. Look at how easy that is. Whole bunch of beads, I think there's 12 on this skewer. And I can simply turn the skewer and then paint the other side. And first I did the white and then the yellow. And now I just wait for them to dry. And once they were dry, I brought them back up into my craft room and tackled the project of removing the beads. Now these are super easy. They were smaller beads, so they come off nice and easy and I didn't have to use any tape. But even when it did come to removing the tape, you can see the tape is very easy to remove.
And to string these together, I'm actually going to use these larger needles and I love these. It makes it so much easier to string beads together, but I always make sure to put them back in their container. Look at how easy this is. So this is just regular yarn that I got at Michael's. And now I can easily string these beads onto the yarn. And I do tie a couple of knots in the bottom because I don't want my beads to come off the end. And tying the knots is actually harder than stringing the beads. And for my beads, I'm gonna do one large yellow one and then one small white one and just continue that pattern all the way until I run out of beads. And I think it's pretty easy to see how easy it is to thread the beads onto the yarn with these giant needles. Sometimes it's about working smarter and not harder. All right, that is about it. And we are done threading all of the beads onto the yarn. So now all I have to do is tie a knot in the end and then the bead portion of my farmhouse beads is done. And I do have this tassel maker. It makes it a lot easier to make tassels and you can make them in different sizes. And actually it's really affordable. I have made tassels from scratch in the past, but this makes it a lot easier. So I went ahead and invested the $12 that it cost and it was really worth the investment. First, you just wrap however much yarn you want around the center. and then tie in the center of all of the yarn strands again with another piece of yarn or whatever you're using. And then you just cut each end. And just like that, you can see our beautiful tassel. And then I just tie one more strand of yarn around to make the top of the tassel and tie it into a knot. and then just trim off the long pieces so that they all are about the same length. And we just made a tassel. And here is a beautiful strand of farmhouse beads that I custom made using the colors that I wanted. This is a really fun and easy project that you can do. And I think it will really elevate your tiered tray. All right, now we have another easy one. This is a Dollar Tree lantern and I'm just going to use some chalk paint and paint the entire lantern white. And actually the paintbrush that I'm using, this thing works really great for adding some texture. And I got this at the Dollar Tree and it was a set of three for $1.25.
And while this adorable little lantern looks really cute being white, I did want to add some color to it. So I took that fancy paintbrush again and just took a little bit of turquoise or aqua paint and just kind of dry brushed it over the entire lantern. Now these type of lanterns are so cute and they do have a LED candle in the bottom of them. So you can turn them on if you want. But I found that these are a really nice little accent piece to go onto my tiered tray no matter what time of year it is. And at $1.25, it's pretty affordable to buy multiples of them and you can paint them different colors for whichever season that you're decorating your tiered tray and it's a really easy project. And here is my finished little lantern. Isn't it cute? I really like the texture that that brush added. All right, we are on to the next project, which is a little vase. And I got this at the Dollar Tree, of course. And I cut off that little hang tag and then remove the sticker from the bottom. And I'm gonna take this little vase outside and paint it. And I'm really liking this sea glass color. So this is by Krylon and it's a matte finish. And I just spray painted the entire thing inside and out. And here is my adorable little vase. I did wrap it with some cord and then used this berry garland that I've had for a really long time and wrapped it around just to give it a little bit of something extra. All right, on to the next project. So now we're gonna make a rolling pin. And I've seen these and they are adorable, but I didn't really wanna spend $8 on a rolling pin. So I had some scrap wood and decided, you know what, we're gonna see if we can make a rolling pin. And it was pretty easy. So that little dowel in the center, that was scrap and I can't remember what size it is. And the other ones were actually little hooks that I had hanging on the wall that I never used. So I decided to cut the ends off and make them into a rolling pin. And I did use a little bit of sandpaper to make sure the edges are nice and smooth of all of the pieces. And next I took some dark folk art wax and I painted each of the smaller dowels because those are gonna be the ends of my rolling pin. Then I just wiped off the excess wax and it looks like it's been stained. I repeated the process for the other end. and then painted the rolling pin itself. And I am doing all spring colors, so a lot of pastels, and I really liked this color. It kind of looks like a lilac color. So I painted the entire rolling pin or dowel with the lilac paint.
Now can you see the rolling pin? So once it was dry, I attached the little dowels to the ends of the bigger dowel. That totally looks like a rolling pin. And then I used my Cricut machine and cut out some letters using some permanent vinyl and then attached the letters to the rolling pin. That's a nice spring word, isn't it? And I did add a little bit of extra embellishment to one end. I had this gingham ribbon and it's pink and I thought that looked really nice with the purple. So I just attached it to one end of the rolling pin. And I wanted it to have a little bit of something extra, so I did make a bow using some jute. And I wrapped a little bit of jute around covering up some of the ribbon because I thought that would look nice. And to me, it made sense since I have a jute bow. And there is my bloom rolling pin. That's nice and springy, don't you think? Oh, all right, we are going to make another lantern because like I said, these are so cute and they look so nice on a tiered tray. And I'm gonna do a little something extra to this one. But first I had to paint it and I'm using that little paintbrush I got again from the Dollar Tree because it gives a nice little bit of texture. And again, I'm using the white chalk paint to paint the entire lantern. Now this was a little bit time consuming and I found out later that that bottom piece does come off, but hindsight being 2020, I should have tried to take the bottom off first. So if you do find a lantern like this, they do have them in the garden section at the Dollar Tree right now. It would make it a lot easier to paint the inside of the lantern. Or if you wanted to leave it plain, you could just leave it plain too. And I did like the key ring part of that, so I went ahead and painted that too. 
And this is the extra piece. I'm taking that little blue flower ball we made and putting it inside the lantern. Isn't that adorable? Here is my little farmhouse style lantern with the flowers and it kind of looks like it was like that in the first place. All right, now this is a fun project. We are gonna make some stackable books and these are so much fun. I found these at Valentine's Day at the Dollar Tree and oh my gosh, I love these stacked books. So much so that you can see I'm painting a set of kind of gray and white. But here are the ones that we're gonna be using for this project, nice spring colors. And I'm just cleaning up the edges and making sure that each color is complete on each of the different books. And it is okay to get the paint in those little crevices because we're going to make them look like books again in just a minute. And for my colors, I did a light yellow, a pink, and then an aqua. And then I added in a little bit of white to give it some extra texture and dimension. So here's the secret to making it look like books again. I used a black permanent marker. This just happened to be a Cricut marker because that was all that I had. And I just drew in that crevice and I made the lines as crisp as I could with that Cricut marker. And next I used my Cricut machine again and I had wanted this to say something different and the lettering, I made it too big. So spring has sprung was going to be the theme of my decor of my tiered tray. You'll find out why I say that in a few minutes. But next I took those letters and then put it on some transfer paper so that I can transfer each of the words over to each of the books. And I found this transfer paper, tape, whatever you wanna call it at Amazon. And this stuff is so good. I will make sure to leave a link in the description box below because I'm telling you this is the best transfer tape I have ever used. See how easy they come apart? And I just put each of the words on each of the books. And we have to add a little bit of embellishment. So I added some ribbon and some jute and a couple of flowers to the top. But there is my Spring Has Sprung book collection for my tiered tray. All right, so this one is a fun project. It's a little bit time consuming, but we are gonna take this jute. We're gonna take three strands of it and then we're gonna braid those together and we're gonna make a whole bunch of jute braids, just like that. Then using three different strands, we're gonna braid those together. 
And I found using the frog tape works really well to keep the end in place while I'm braiding the three separate strands of the jute twine. And basically I just took three strands of jute to make each of those strands that I'm braiding right now. And then using the end of a ribbon spool, I cut out a circle. Pretty easy, huh? And then I used my tape again to seal the circle where I had cut it before. And it was too wide for the jute, so I decided to cut it again to make sure that the jute will cover it. And I guess I should have told you in the beginning, this is going to be a jute wreath. It's not a very big wreath, but it is a very cute wreath. So I just hot glued that braided jute onto my template or my wreath form. And when I got to the end, I just really secured the remaining piece down with a lot of hot glue. But I still had a lot of jute left, so I decided to use that to cover up the ends of where I had glued down. And there's my jute wreath. But of course, you know it's gonna need a little something extra. So I used some lace ribbon and I made a bow using that ribbon. And this is actually a remnant scrap from something else. I think it was like wrapping a package or something. So I can't let anything go to waste. So that's in my craft room too. So I made a littler bow and then I took some tiny little silk flower stems and I just secured those on with, with the glue as well. And now I have a top and a very pretty little tiny little wreath that I can put on my tiered tray. All right, next we're gonna make two blocks using one of these block units, I don't know what you wanna call it, from the Dollar Tree. And after deciding which colors I wanted them to be, it was time to paint them. And I made sure to paint every single side of each of the blocks. So top, bottom, left, right, 
every single side gets coated with some paint. And I thought the yellow would look really nice with the pink. And the yellow is a little bit easier to paint because this is the bigger part or this is like where that littler block fits into. I don't think it'll fit in now though with the paint on it, but that's okay. We're not using it as a drawer. We are using it as a block. And these actually paint really well. One coat of paint was actually enough to give a nice coat of paint. And once they were dry, I sanded down all of the edges. Gives it a little bit of a distressed look, but it also cleans everything up really nicely. And then using my Cricut machine, I found some different flower shapes and I secured one of those flower pictures to each of the blocks. And making blocks this way out of different pieces from the Dollar Tree is a lot more affordable than if you were to go and try to find blocks of wood this shape and size because they can get really expensive. And here are my adorable little flower blocks that will add a little bit of something extra to my tiered tray. Now I have this cute little succulent, but I don't want the succulents. I just want that terracotta pot. So I got rid of the succulents and I am painting the pot this pretty lilac color. I guess it's lavender, but I like lilac. And while that was drying, I went outside and found some freshly sprouting stems, which these are just little stems from a cherry tree. How fitting, because we're gonna make it cherry blossoms. And I secured the twigs or sticks into the pot using hot glue, and then just put some Dollar Tree rocks around it. And next I had these little, I guess, flower I guess they're cherry blossoms, I don't know. But I just took some of those flowers and glued them onto the sticks. And I thought it looked really pretty to glue them where those leaves were starting to pop out. And believe it or not, the leaves are still there even though <laughs> the twigs, the sticks are secure in that planter pot. But yeah, they're still green, pretty impressive. I think they look really cute and it adds a little bit of height to the top of my tiered tray.
Okay, so for this next project, I had this wood that I got from Amazon. It was like a set of them for seven or eight dollars. And I believe the size is four inches by four inches square. So it's just a square piece of wood and I painted it all white. I didn't have any more of my chalk paint, so I actually used my acrylic paint that I use for painting. This is titanium white. And I painted the sides and the front of the block with the titanium white paint. And next I used my Cricut machine again to cut out some letters. And I found this one piece of transfer tape and I went ahead and used that for my letters after I set the words up how I want them to be on the block. And this transfer tape did not work very well at all. So I went back to my old reliable and put the letters onto that before securing them onto the white block of wood. Here is spring has sprung again. This is what I had originally planned to use that saying for. Look at how easy that stuff comes off. And then I just distressed the corners a little bit and sanded them down. And then using some hot glue, I secured jute to the back and then wrapped that around the open part of the block of wood. And once I was happy with the amount of jute, I cut the end off and then decided to make a flower to go in the center of that jute. And I've had this craft foam forever and didn't really ever know what I was gonna use it for. And I was like, huh, that would make a perfect flower since it's already in the shape of a flower. I just need to make one that is a lot smaller. So I tried to copy the pattern of the piece of foam in the first place and then just cut out that teeny tiny flower. And then I used some yellow to go in the center. And again, I just cut it down to size so that it would be the center of the flower. And securing to the jute with hot glue. Now I have this adorable little sign, spring has sprung. And this is a super easy one. Oh my goodness. So I found this sign at Hobby Lobby and I loved it, but I want it to stand up on its own. So I used some Jenga blocks and basically made a back for the sign, attached them with some hot glue. And now my cute little farm truck sign will stand up on its own. All right, you guys, so we just made 14 different projects for a tiered tray. Look at all of these decorations. So now I thought it would be fun to actually decorate my tiered tray and show you how I used each of these pieces in my decorating. 
And here are all of the pieces that I just made. This is my spring theme decor for my tiered tray that is sitting up in my dining room right now. And today I wanted to show you how you can make a really pretty Easter sign using a sign from the Dollar Tree along with a frame from the Dollar Tree and a Cricut machine. If you don't have a Cricut machine, you could probably freehand this, but I have a Cricut, so we are going to make a Easter hang-up sign using this adorable Easter sign itself from the Dollar Tree and this really pretty frame. This frame is so awesome and I haven't seen this type of frame at my Dollar Tree before, but it's really cool. It has kind of a gold pattern in it and I, I like it just like it is and I think that's going to be perfect for our Easter sign. So let's go ahead and take the insides out of this frame and we'll put it off to the side because I'm not going to use it right away. But we don't need the glass. We don't need anything else other than the frame itself. Even these little tack guys, we don't need those either. So I'm going to see if I can pull them out of there. Yep, they come out pretty easy. I just don't want them to end up showing on my finished project, which they may not, but yeah, see, I think you can see that little guy. He might show from a different angle. I don't want that in the end result. So we are gonna get rid of those guys and then throw them away safely. But this is what I wanted. That is so pretty. This sign is really cute. Every bunny is welcome. And I really like the fact that the hangups are up here. And I also like the fact of how Dollar Tree is doing the hangups now with these little plastic pieces because it makes it super easy, not only to remove, but then also to reuse it. And this one has two. So I'm gonna take both of those off. And I am going to reuse these, but not with the bunnies on here. So I'm also gonna remove the bunnies. All right, so I am going to save those bunnies for another project for another day. And for now, I'm going to take these jute hangers and I'm just going to set them off to the side because we are going to use them just not right now. And actually, this is a really nice size sign from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use the back, not this side. So next, I'm going to paint the back side of the sign. And what I've done is I have these Crafter Square paint bottles. It's not Crafter Square paint in here, it's actually chalk paint. I really like working with chalk paint with these blank signs. So I just take chalk paint from a huge like quart container and I refill these bottles because these bottles are really nice. And next I'm just going to paint my lovely little blank with the chalk paint. I did raise this sign up so I have another Dollar Tree sign underneath it because it makes it easier to maneuver when I'm painting and then when I'm going to remove it. And if I get too much paint onto this project, all I have to do is brush it off on the ends and it will go down onto my silicone mats and then I can easily wash it. I don't want to waste paint, but at the same time I want to make sure I have enough paint for the project itself. Now, if I was Bob Ross, I'd be making happy little clouds. You could totally make happy little clouds if you wanted to, but I want this to have a solid layer of the white paint. And like I said, I'm okay if there are some heavier areas. That's why I'm just going over the surface back and forth in mostly straight lines because I do want to see some of the variation between the light and the dark. I'm also not going to worry if it's not 100% covered on the edges, but I do want to make sure these little holes for the hangers are not filled in with paint. All right, now here is the super fun thing that I wanted to show you. I want to give this some texture and have it look aged, so I'm going to take this piece of wood also from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just kind of brush it along the side.
This is kind of an easy way to give it a faux appearance that it's kind of aged. Super fun. Oh my gosh, this is like my new favorite thing to do now. And what I really like about using this kind of a technique for the painting is it gives different like textures to the blank itself. It is so cool. And now I'm just going to set my blank off to the side and allow it to dry. And now we're gonna do another project. Now this one's gonna be really easy, I hope. So this is a Dollar Tree sign and I was hoping I would be able just to peel off this fall, it's fall y'all. It's just a piece of paper that's on here. Not that it's gonna do anything to hurt the sign, but it's nice to get most of that off. Okay, so I've got the most of the sign off, and this one is gonna be a hang up, so I am going to utilize that little hanger, which is awesome. And I found these paints at Hobby Lobby. They were actually on clearance. This one was originally $8.99, and it was marked down to $1.62. And this was $6.49 and marked down to $1.62. So these are just Folk Art One Decor paint. And on the label, it says that it gives it a eggshell finish. So that's kind of nice, but that's a nice large container of paint for not a lot of money. And what I'm gonna do is take both of these paints and I'm going to paint this guy. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with that other project as far as I'm going to put the paint all over it. And this guy I'm actually going to paint the sides, all four sides as well, because it is kind of a sign and it's going to be hanging up. So I don't want to have this front, like part of the sign be one color and then that be white. So I'm going to go ahead and paint those as well. set that paintbrush off to the side and get another paintbrush and I'm going to just kind of add some of this aloe color that is a pretty fun combination of colors kind of teal and aloe I just really like having the different layers of color on things that I'm gonna hang up. I think it gives it a little bit more dimension. And then we are gonna let him dry too, just like I'm doing with that first piece that I did. So obviously if you are using something like this from the Dollar Tree and it has a paper surface on it, using something like this to drag and give it some texture, probably not going to work very well. But we found a solution to that and I think this looks pretty nice. I think it looks very springy and it's really gonna look springy when we come back when this is all dry. Okay, so for this next part of the project, this is going to be for a pretty little hang up sign that I'm making that's the color of my fingers. I can't decide if I want this bunny because I really like him, he's super cute. And then he's gonna have a cotton tail like that. So I can't decide between him or him. Don't know, I think, I think we're just gonna go with the regular bunny because he is just adorable. So these are actually multiple pieces and I believe I got these at Hobby Lobby when they were on clearance last year. So I want to take two of these pieces and I'm going to secure them together. Now I'm just going to use hot glue because <laughs> it's fast. So I'm gonna take my hot glue, just paint a little bit of it on and then secure the two pieces together. Basically going to give it kind of a 3D appearance with the bunny coming out. So he's gonna be a little bit bigger. And then of course with the cottontail, it's gonna make him even more three-dimensional. So I want to have this bunny be kind of like rustic in appearance. So I'm going to start painting him with some white chalk paint. And I kind of want him to be, I really want him to be just really rustic looking. So I don't want a complete solid white 
almost like a dry brush. But then I'm going to add in a little bit of this tan color. So, and I don't want a ton of paint on here and I don't want it to be, have a ton of tan. That white is actually our, almost dry already. So the tan will be nice because that's going to add, again, some definition, kind of like, kind of like the background has. Definitely giving him a rustic appearance for sure. But I'm going to step it up one more level and I'm going to add some antique wax. Again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the tan, just a tiny little bit of the wax. I think let's make him go up and down too, and maybe a little bit side to side as well. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little more wax all the way around the sides of the two pieces that we joined together. And it's okay if some of it gets around, I kind of like that, where it's getting around the front edge of our bunny. And there is a very cute and adorable rustic looking bunny cut out. Okay, so my little bunny guy, I, I like him, but at the same time, I'm thinking I might want to actually make him dark and then have more of a white background. And this is what's fun, I think, when it comes to crafting. You can kind of play around with stuff and if you don't like it, you can change it, which is totally fine, right? Let me know in the comments, do you like it better dark or did you like it better the light color? And you don't even necessarily have to use any stain if you don't want to. You could just do a plain bunny on there too. And that looks pretty cute. I like that too. I don't know, he looks kind of cool like that. But I think I really do like him like that the best. So I'm just curious what happens if we add a little bit of that brown into our blank. That looks kind of cool, kind of rustic. And I can just wipe off the excess. And then just kind of add a little bit more around the sides. That gives it just a little bit more rustic look. Looks aged, kind of old, more vintage, I guess you would say. I actually don't think I am going to add any white to him because he looks pretty cool like that. So now all I have to do is put a bunny tail on there. So just a little bit of hot glue. And he has a cute fluffy pom-pom tail. And I'm just making sure that I have the hanger at the top and I'm gonna do a little more hot glue. And just like that, I have an adorable Easter sign that was super easy to make. Very cute. All right, now remember our sign that we made way back in the beginning of the video, and this is all dry. And I did seal this with a coat of sealer because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stencil on this and I really hope it doesn't pull up the paint because that would just be horrible. Totally looks like this is wood. So now I'm going to get my stencil and we are going to stencil on a bunny. My stencil that I have put onto the transfer paper or transfer tape and now we have our awesome little sign and this is where the Dollar Tree frame comes in because the Dollar Tree frame is going to frame our hippity hop and how I'm making sure that this is mostly centered is I'm going off of the little holes at the top of the blank and I do want to make sure that my hippity hop is going to fit in my frame or I want it to be. And actually I think that is pretty good. Yeah, I think that is gonna look really nice. So now I'm going to secure the stencil onto this sign that we made. So 
So now what I'm going to do is fill in all of the open space with a paint. And because I love burnt umber, I think that is the paint that I'm going to use. And I don't think I'm really going to need that much paint because we're just stenciling. And that's why I've got a foam brush because that seems to work pretty well for applying the paint. And it's also really affordable. You can get a whole bunch of these little foam brushes for less than a dollar. If you go to the Dollar Tree, you can get a whole package of them for $1.25. Actually, anybody who's watching this video is the best and I really appreciate you watching. So if you have a moment, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and then you can see all of the really cool projects that I make. All right, now moment of truth. Yay, I am not peeling off my paint. Just this stencil. He looks like a chocolate bunny. Look at how adorable that is. adorable little hippity hop. And I know it looks pretty simple and plain just like that, but that's okay because now we are going to add the frame on top of it. For this project, I am going to use some wood glue and this is from the Dollar Tree. It's actually super glue wood glue and it's incredible. It works really well. So we have our frame ready to go and we have our big fancy picture. So now I'm just going to try to center this over our hippity hop and then allow it to dry. So now I just have one more thing left to do for my sign and that is to replace these two hangers. So we have our jute hangers, but I'm going to add a little bit of something extra to those jute hangers. I have a bunch of wooden beads and I thought this would give it a really cute and farmhouse look to put the hangers back up, but I'm gonna put some beads onto the hangers themselves. put the beads onto my picture. And here is the finished hippity hop sign. as well as my adorable little rustic bunny. And I am very happy with how these turned out. I think they are so cute and they were super easy to make. 